Welcome to our introduction of the Node Editor, coming your way in Lightwave 9.0. In this series of videos, we'll be taking a look at what's happening in this new Surface Editor. If you are an experienced Lightwave user, you'll already be familiar with the Surface Editor functionality that the F5 key brought you in previous versions. All of that functionality is still in place, but you'll notice a new button on the Surface Editor panel the Edit Nodes button. What are nodes, you ask? Nodes are a completely new feature in this coming version of Lightwave 3D. As for what a node specifically is, the dictionary tells us that a node is a basic unit used to build data structures, such as linked lists and tree data structures. It says nodes contain data and or links to other nodes, and that links between nodes are often implemented or represented by pointers or references. If nodes contain data and can link to other nodes, then we need a way to edit and represent that data, and a way of linking them. That editor, the node editor, is what we're about to introduce you to. You use the node editor to connect nodes together and alter node parameters to build what is called a network. A texture or shader network is a set of linked nodes that together will define the characteristics you want for a given name surface. With this very flexible ability to create networks for precise control of shading and texturing, the Node Editor is a new and powerful control paradigm integrated into Lightwave's core. Among the far more powerful surfacing capabilities the Node Editor brings the artists in Lightwave 9 is the ability to use different shading models on a per-surface basis, making Lightwave's beautiful photoreal renderer now more flexible and on par with other high-end dedicated third-party renderers. And Lightwave's development team will be building new features and capabilities into the Node Editor with every new version of Lightwave 3D. In addition, complete access to node creation tools and editor functions is available in Lightwave 9.0's SDK. Third parties will be able to create new nodes of any kind, including alternate shading models. For backwards compatibility, nodes are disabled by default, so we need to enable them for the networks to be able to affect our named surface. Click the checkbox toggle next to the Edit Nodes button to enable or disable nodes. Clicking on the Edit Nodes button itself brings up our lightning fast node editor. Let's take a brief tour of the GUI and familiarize ourselves with the way this thing works. From left to right, we have the Add Nodes pop-up menu, where you select nodes to add to the workspace area. The Edit pop-up menu, where we find a full set of tools for working in the node editor during network creation, cleanup, or during the discovery and learning process many of you will have while getting to know the node editor through a rich set of included examples and presets, or while working in group project-oriented environments. An Update button. This is used to manually update preview spheres if you have chosen Manual Update in the Preview Options panel. An Options button which brings up the Preview Options panel for the Node Preview and Display properties. A set of scroll and zoom widgets for scrolling and zooming within the workspace. And an extension widget for the Embedded Edit panel, which is just one of several ways you may choose to work when editing individual Node properties. The Node List window displays the list of nodes that you already have added to the workspace. This additionally acts as an aid for selecting and editing nodes during network creation or for fine-tuning existing networks. This is the workspace area. Here is probably where you'll find yourself doing most of the work of linking and editing nodes you've added to construct a logical network for texturing or shading. Each node has a number of color-coded inputs and outputs. 
Outputs are connected logically to the appropriate inputs of other nodes in order to form logical networks that will define your texture or shader. Remember that texturing and shading in Lightwave is always performed per pixel or per spot. So the effects that one output often has on another node when connected to its input is much more dramatic than in previous versions of Lightwave where only a layered system was available. The Add Node menu displays a list of all nodes, both third-party and the ones developed by Nutex Lightwave team. Briefly walking through this menu, we see 2D texture nodes and 3D texture nodes, which should be familiar from Lightwave's layered texturing system found in the Texture Editor's Procedural Type pop-up menu listing. There are constant nodes for defining constants such as a color, an angle, or a number. Function nodes are a unique way of modifying the algorithms that generate our texture patterns. Gradient, where we house our animatable gradient node and various tools for working with gradients. Here you can see I have some third-party nodes already installed. In this case, the IFW2 node-based texture and shader set. Item info nodes so our textures and shaders can interact with other items in the scene. Layers, which are a set of nodes for bringing in the old layer system into the node editor so we can have the best of both nodes and layers together in one editing system. Math nodes ranging from simple addition to vector algebra and trigonometric functions for advanced users, all categorized for easy application and understanding. Shaders. As mentioned earlier, Lightwave now offers the user multiple shading models to choose from. We'll get more into these in several forthcoming videos. This menu structure has a direct relation with the destination node's input for an easy understanding of their intended purpose and how they are logically used in the network. A spot information node for reading advanced shader spot data from surfaces. Tools, which are various tools needed for node-based texturing and shading. Vertex map nodes for controlling or using controls from morph maps, weight maps, and vector color maps. That's quite a list to take in at first glance, but you'll find that shading and texturing with nodes will quickly and easily become a familiar and powerful way of creating 3D content with more control and less effort than ever before. The node editor interface is designed to work the way you work. It provides you with multiple ways of achieving your surfacing goals. For example, you can add nodes to the workspace either through the pop-up menu here or by control right-clicking directly in the workspace area. Additionally, node properties can be edited in floating panels as well as the embedded edit panels we discussed earlier. The node editor is a pleasure to work with and expands Lightwave capabilities by orders of magnitude. Let's create a simple network to see what the process looks like. We'll use our new animatable gradient node and set up a simple spread from black to red to green to blue. Connecting it to our surface color, we can immediately see the results in the Viper preview. We can then control the shape of this gradient by connecting a texture to its input.
add some bump to enhance the reflective properties. Replacing one of the gradient's key colors is as simple as just drawing a line. Texturing that key color is as simple as adding and connecting the desired texture node. Once you understand this basic menu structure, and some simple rules for what gets connected to what, you'll not only realize just how simple it is to work with the node editor, but also how much more powerful it is than Lightwave's traditional texturing system. And we really are talking orders of magnitude. This concludes our introduction to the node editor GUI.